Now, if you follow my channel, you know I don't do a lot of gaming laptops. I do gaming benchmarks in my reviews of the Ultra Portables, but I don't really do gaming laptops per se. That's about to change right now. I took delivery of the HP Omen X2S last week, and I've been putting it through its paces ever since. And I'm glad I did, because this is a very unique gaming laptop with a dual screen display, really powerful processor, really nice sleek and light design, considering this is a gaming laptop, and a really beautiful 144 hertz display. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP Omen X2S. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell? This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And I just wanted to say thank you to everyone as the channel just surpassed a 65,000 subscriber milestone. I couldn't do it without you. Thanks for watching, liking, and of course subscribing. Despite the YouTube algorithm, we're still here and growing. Today's video is brought to you by LVL Go, your one-stop shop for Windows 10 professional OEM keys, Microsoft Office keys, Steam CD keys, mini games, and so much more. And they all come in at a fantastic price. And I have some even better news. I used to give a 25% discount code for the Windows 10 professional OEM keys. That's now 30% off, even better. Well, what about Microsoft Office? You need that as well? Well, no problem, I got you covered. 25% off, making this an absolute steal. Ordering is easy and safe. Head on over to lvlgo.com for these great savings and remember to use my discount codes and tell them Andrew sent you. Before we get to the unboxing, here's a quick rundown of the specs. What you're looking at is a 15.6 inch 1080p 144Hz IPS display. It's powered by the Intel Core i7-9750H, a 6-core processor. It also has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 with Max-Q design. It has 8GB of GDDR6 video RAM. It has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. It also has 512 gigabytes of PCIe NVMe SSD storage. It's got a 6-cell, 72-watt-hour battery, Ethernet, 802.11ac, dual-band wireless, Bluetooth 5.0. It comes in at a pretty thin and light package when it comes to a gaming laptop. You're looking at 5.2 pounds or 2.36 kilograms. It has a starting price of $1849.99 US. Price as tested, $1999 US. But that's enough with the specs. Let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Okay, lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to that in just a moment. But inside the box, of course, is your 230 watt power adapter that uses a barrel pin connector. And you also get your extension cord as well. Now, inside the box is some documentation as well as some safety and warranty information. And they also give you a palm rest that you'll use if you wanna use this laptop for extended periods of typing. Now holding the laptop for the first time, what strikes me is the design. I actually really like it. It looks pretty sleek considering this is a gaming laptop. It's not too heavy either considering what this packs inside. Okay, let's talk about the ports. We'll start off on the left side. What you get is a power port, an HDMI 2.0 port, two USB-A 3.1 ports, an RJ45 Ethernet, and of course a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right side is a USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port and another USB-A 3.1 port. There's no SD or micro SD card slot. Now what makes this so unique is that this is a dual display gaming laptop. Let's start off with the main display and then we'll get into that secondary display. Now there are three display options, one with a full HD resolution that's 144 hertz. It's also an IPS anti-glare display. That's the one I have. Then you can also go with a 4K IPS anti-glare display that has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. And finally, there's a 240 hertz full HD panel. Okay, you're looking at that 144 hertz full HD panel, resolution 1920 by 1080. It's a sharp, bright panel at 304 nits, although it's not the brightest in the category, definitely good for both indoor and outdoor use. 
you're looking at some pretty deep blacks, pretty good, vibrant colors, but the contrast is okay. I would say it's decent, not the best I've ever seen, but it does cover the color gamut really well at 98% sRGB, 72% Adobe RGB. So this is not only good for gaming, but you could also do some video editing on this, Lightroom, Photoshop. If you're that creative professional that likes to game in addition to do your video editing, this may be a good choice. Now, as far as the bezels are concerned, you will see pretty slim side bezels, but it does have a chin and it's a typical gaming laptop in that sense. You don't have the thinnest of bezels as we see in some of these ultra portables that have been coming out as of late. But I think this display does have a pretty good modern look to it. There's no doubt about that. Okay, let's talk about that secondary display. What you're looking at is a six inch touch display, a glossy display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. It's pretty crisp and sharp, I have to say that. Now, I don't know if this is gimmicky or not, but I actually found some utility in it. I really liked watching YouTube videos, especially my own, while I was playing video games and so forth. So there's a good use case for that. But all kidding aside, it did show some utility. It's not just a gimmick. I think there's some good stuff that you really might find some value in. Now, another unique feature is that you can select a portion of your main display and drag it onto the mini display to give you, say, maps, say, for Fortnite, or if you want to use a scope when you're sniping in another game. It's a pretty interesting and unique use case scenario for sure. But I think the best use case scenario for this is Spotify and, of course, watching YouTube videos. While the main display, you could do some work on, you can edit videos, you can do all sorts of things. So it gives you all sorts of options. I actually like this 6-inch secondary display. Now, if I do have any criticism of that 6-inch display, I kind of wish it was stretched out through that whole panel. This way, you would have more screen real estate that would have included more information, especially when you're playing games and so forth. That would have been interesting. But again, this is a nice idea, and I think it has a lot of potential going forward. Okay, let's talk about the keyboard. It has RGB lights. You could change the colors and patterns, of course, typical of a gaming laptop. Now, they do feel good, the keys, in terms of the spacing and the tactile feedback. These are not mechanical keys. Please keep that in mind. Now, the trackpad is a precision trackpad, which is good to see, and it's pretty responsive. All your gestures work, and, of course, two-finger scrolling works. But I think a lot of you are going to connect a gaming mouse or a Bluetooth mouse or something of that sort. Now, HP does include a wrist rest in the box. It's a little bit heavy and it does collect dirt pretty easily. But having said that, it does have some pretty good comfort, especially when you're gaming or doing extended periods of typing. It does work. Now, it doesn't physically attach to the keyboard itself. Just keep that in mind. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP Omen X2S. It's a front-facing camera. It's not very good, as you can see, very grainy, uh, not very clear. I'm very disappointed in it. This is actually a really nice gaming laptop with that very unique dual screen setup. You got the main screen and then that small six inch screen below. It's actually kind of more handy than I thought it would be. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. As far as this camera is concerned, it's not very good. Okay, let's talk about performance, and it is good as you would expect with that Core i7-9750H, which is a 6-core processor from Intel. It also has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Max-Q design. They also can make it with the 2080. That's a little bit more money, of course. It also has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM for the video. Now, as far as the performance itself is concerned, it did really well in the Geekbench 4 test. Check out the Cinebench R15 test. Obviously, this thing really rocks in terms of performance. Now, in addition to gaming, you could do video editing. You could also do productivity work, Microsoft Office, web browsing, email, consuming media, such as Netflix and YouTube. But why you're really buying this laptop is, of course, for that gaming. And as you can see from these results that I ran on the different games that I tested, this thing definitely performs really well with extremely good playable frame rates, as you can see. Now, to give you an example, playing Fortnite on the ultra settings, you're looking at around 30, 35 frames per second. Dropping it down to the very high settings, you're looking at around 45 to 50 frames per second. Dropping it down to the medium settings, you're looking at over 60 plus frames per second. So that'll give you an idea of what kind of gameplay you can get on this laptop.
Now, when it comes to the thermals, it's pretty interesting. If you can see the keyboard and touchpad actually stayed relatively cool during my gaming stress test, but the bottom obviously got pretty hot, which is pretty typical of a gaming laptop. It reached 55.5 degrees Celsius or 131.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And because of the thinner chassis that you see on this laptop than other gaming laptops, you will notice a more thermal throttling on this. That's because the heat is harder to dissipate with this laptop, despite all the heat vents that it does have. Now, as far as upgradability is concerned, in order to get inside the HP Omen X2S, you have to unscrew the six T6 Torx screws, remove the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you can upgrade the RAM. There are two SODIMM slots, so that's good. And you could also upgrade the SSD. There are two slots for the SSD, by the way, so you can have two SSDs going at the same time. So that's pretty good as well. And speaking of that SSD, check out these really good reads and writes. Now while inside, you'll notice that 72 watt hour battery. Now gaming laptops typically do not have very good battery life. And of course, this is no exception, getting only two hours and 33 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. Now, of course, if you turn G-Sync on, it'll be even less. So keep that in mind. But of course, we're not buying these gaming laptops for the battery life. We're buying them for the processing power. They do supply you with a 230 watt power adapter, which is pretty robust. It uses a barrel pin connector and gives you a full charge in under two hours, which is is pretty good. Now, to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with the audio on this laptop. I had higher expectations. I expected the volume to get louder. I just didn't think it was all that great. Now, you do have an equalizer that gives you some preset settings. You can play with the settings, and it makes it a little bit better. But overall, I think the audio is really disappointing on this laptop. But I don't think it's a deal breaker in the end because I think a lot of you who are buying this for the gaming capabilities are going to be using a gaming headset anyway. So keep that in mind. So to wrap it all up, can I recommend the HP Omen X2S? Is it worth your hard-earned money? And the answer is yes, it is, but there are some compromises you need to be aware of. What I do like is its unique 6-inch secondary display, its sharp Full HD main display at 144 hertz. I also like its very good performance. It's reasonably thin and light as far as a gaming laptop is concerned, and it's really fast SSD. What are the things that... Now, the things that I don't like, of course, it's a major fingerprint magnet. You will be wiping it down quite a bit. It has very short battery life, but that's to be expected for a gaming laptop in general. And it has lackluster speakers. I was really disappointed. I expected more out of those speakers. But there are no real deal breakers to me, especially if you're a gamer and you want some really good performance and you want to make use of that six inch secondary display, this may be your ticket. I'm going to give the HP Omen X2S an 80%, making it worth your money. So what do you think about this bad boy, the HP Omen X2S? I really like it. I think it's a really interesting gaming laptop, especially because it has that dual display, the 15.6 inch main display, and of course that six inch secondary display above the keyboard. And it comes in handy more than you might think. I used it a lot to watch Spotify, watch YouTube videos, and it has that unique capability of clipping sections on the main screen to be displayed in that secondary six inch display. Now, the build is really good. I like the look. It's not obnoxious like some gaming laptops are with the different designs. This actually looks pretty good. It's actually pretty thin and light considering this is a gaming laptop. It's a little bit over five pounds and it's fully upgradable. You can change out the SSD. There's an extra bay for a second SSD. You could also change out the RAM as well. There are two SODIMM slots in this. This is a really good gaming laptop that's great for the person that likes to travel, likes to get work done for productivity work, and also likes to game. Now, when it comes to the thermals, it, I would say it's okay for a normal task if you do some gaming. If you're really pushing it, it will start to thermal throttle. Remember, they packed in a lot in this really thin chassis. But overall, I think this is a really nice buy. I think you get a lot for the money, especially if you're serious about gaming. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comments section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.